Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Dan Viederman, Managing Director of Humanity United, Jan Somweber, Senior Vice President of Responsible Sourcing to Walmart, and Anu George, Director of Operations at the International Justice Mission's Delhi Presence. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Dan Biederman. I'm the Managing Director of Humanity United and the Working Capital Fund at Humanity United, which is an effort to use venture capital-like approaches to solve the problems of slavery and labor exploitation in supply chains. So here we are. I'm pleased to be the moderator in service of these two exceptional women, Jan Somweber, who is Senior Vice President of Responsible Sourcing at Walmart, a large company you may have heard of, and Anu George, who is Director of Operations in the Delhi Office of International Justice Mission, one of the most effective international NGOs dealing with the problem of supply chains and modern day slavery, forced labor, and human trafficking. We just heard a great panel from a bunch of business leaders talking about the imperative and the business case and the importance of dealing with the issue of slavery and labor exploitation in supply chains. And now we're going to talk about a fairly rare case, it's still a little rare, where we have a company and an NGO that have come into collaboration with one another to try and make concrete progress. Sometimes some people would have thought that was a little tricky to have companies and NGOs in collaboration with one another. So we will unpack what is it that attracted these two institutions to one another, what have they achieved together, and then lastly, what can't they achieve through the kind of collaboration that they're undertaking, and how do they um, take steps to, to deal with other ex external issues. So I will start with Jan. Some might say it would be a little scary for a big company like Walmart to open itself up to a collaboration with an NGO. To what extent was that true? And what made you do it anyway? Yeah. We really didn't approach it from a position of fear. Walmart's been working to address challenges in the supply chain for years. And one of the things that we've learned is that no one organization, no matter how big, how passionate, how influential, can solve the biggest issues of our time. So we are constantly on the lookout for folks that we can partner with that come from an authentic place of wanting to drive change. And I would say I think that the old stereotype of NGO versus business, uh, us versus them, is outdated thinking, and that partnership is a new leadership. And IJM has great expertise and a, a solid leadership position on this tough topic, and we've grown to trust them. So what exactly are you doing together? Well, four years ago, some of my colleagues from Responsible Sourcing reached out to International Justice Mission. And we reached out to them because of their track record in establishing baseline studies and then driving and measuring impact. And that's how we like to work. We wanted to get their perspective on some of these challenges and what potential interventions might be. So uh, some of my colleagues started this dialogue, and it grew to a more focused conversation, and ultimately to two significant ways that our organizations are working together today. One is um, we have identified that an international justice mission already had expertise in addressing human trafficking issues in Southeast Asia. And that was instrumental in our decision in wanting to work together, because Southeast Asia is an important sourcing region for us. So uh, we reached out and established um, a $2 million investment from the Walmart Foundation to International Justice Mission. And the goal of that investment was to drive a measurable reduction in forced labor in Thai seafood industry. Okay, so a very focused objective. The investment supported establishing IGM's Bangkok office it supported establishing the beginning of their casework operations there and the beginning of a data platform that could drive criminal analytics. So now you have more focused investigative capabilities. You've got informed analysis coming into it, which should drive better outcomes, more vic victims rescued, and more of those responsible um, being prosecuted. Thanks. And Anu, from your perspective, so Walmart approaches you. They're this huge multinational retailer. And the folks at IJM say what? No, I think it is uh, very encouraging when powerful multinationals like Walmart, uh, you know, decides to do everything possible to clean the supply chain. You know, and uh, specifically with the work in Bangkok, um, the the focus was clear to 
to, uh, to ensure that trafficking-related crimes were addressed. And as Chan just mentioned, uh, the approach Typically, I mean, there was a, there's a, a mutual goal that we're looking at, and uh, there is trust in the relationship. Uh, there's a, um, you know, accountability piece that uh, is common between both the uh, organization, be the corporation, and uh, IGM. So I think it just worked out very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear. Um, Jane, you mentioned measurable success, or for both of you. What are you, how are you going to measure whether or not this collaboration leads you in the direction that you had anticipated? Well, that's one of the important parts of, and Anu mentioned, establishing trust. And one of the important parts of establishing trust is being transparent with each other about what, um, where we are today and what our objectives are, being candid about our constraints, and having the humility to really hear and learn from each other. Exactly. And then we get to what you're talking about, Dan, which is how do you establish metrics, right? And that's, that's what we need to do is to, that, you know, we've gotten the baseline study in, and now we're establishing metrics for what will success look like in driving that measurable reduction in trafficking in the Thai seafood industry. Um, it's important as we build these collaborations, though, and just like in any organization working together, you need to have clear roles and responsibilities. You need to have an ultimate goal in mind. You need milestones that you track progress in. And you need to hold yourselves and each other accountable for hitting those and be transparent when you're going to miss something. So that's, the, that's a conversation that IJM and Walmart has on a regular basis? Absolutely. As part of a coalition? The, the, the partnership, I mean, it cannot be just, you know, let's, let's get this going and, you know, reach out after five, ten years, uh, only when the conversation keeps going. And I think uh, that's really how we work with, um, you know, any organization, all our partnerships, be it uh, grassroots NGOs or be it uh, the government relationships that we have. The conversation is always ongoing. Uh, it is important because, um, you know, we need to stay relevant and uh, we need to ensure that the relevance is also heard, uh, not just ground up, uh, but also, you know, um, top down. Mm -hmm. So. IJM largely works with, or is known for working largely with governments. So how does this collaboration with a company fit into your, your, your theory of change or your work? Um, so now the onus of uh, anything that goes wrong cannot be entirely resting with the corporates. The government has a huge role to play. Um, if there is human trafficking, the public justice system needs to work. Um, so the, 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 the cleaning up of the supply chain is a huge piece, but at the same time, law enforcement, you know, ensuring that the perpetrators are booked, all of that is a responsibility of the state. So it is so crucial for us to continue with our uh, relationship with the government on one side. If I was um, uh, going to pick out the relationship we have with the Indian government, from a, a denial space to now committing to um, identify, rescue, and rehabilitate, and ensure that the perpetrators are convicted, 1.84 for crore of them. That commitment has come from the government. Now, when that is in place, the corporations can continue to do their business knowing fully well that uh, you know, the, respect, the state is taking the onus of ensuring that the criminal justice system uh, is working. Um, so it cannot be either or. It has to be these three pieces uh, working together. And Jen, that same version of that same question, how, how is Walmart engaging or interacting with governments that um, my view, would, should step up and do a little bit more of enforcing their, their laws. How is that fitting into this collaboration and the work that Walmart's trying to do? It is part of the, the collaborations. In, in some cases, we approach the governments as part of a group that is addressing an issue, like a seafood task force. In some cases, it's directly as Walmart, where in the case of Thailand, where you recognize the progress that's being made, and then you continue to challenge for, for higher levels of, of prosecution. And, and more enforcement of laws. And collaboration in the Thai seafood space involves many big companies like yours and some small medium enterprises who are at the table as well. What are the, what are the, the opportunities and maybe some of the challenges of working in a collaboration of a bunch of big companies? It's something that hasn't been done very often where you bring competitors together and you bring you know, suppliers, processors, NGOs together, technology companies, and try to solve a problem. And it's really energizing when people bring an authentic point of view where they want to help drive change and that they're open to being in that kind of a collaboration. So um, we find that as long as the objectives are clear and as long as people know what their various roles and responsibilities are and that you lay that out in the beginning, 
and that you set, again, set guidelines and measure progress against them. So for example, in the case of the Seafood Task Force, where you know, we align an industry-wide code of conduct that had never existed before, established auditable standards that had never existed before, mm. a vessel monitoring and tracking reporting system that is new, uh, working with the government to do port in, port out verification of, of vessels. So everyone working together, the benefit of that is you're not independently developing three or four different things that compete or conflict, and you can harness your efforts together and be so much more effective when you want to tackle a common challenge. Uh, anu, so Walmart came to, came to you initially um, and expressed interest in, in working and leveraging IJM's knowledge and expertise, and, and particularly regional knowledge and expertise. Um, IJM said yes. IJM also then raised some money through the, through the process from the Walmart Foundation. What would you hope to, um, what would you ask of other companies that are also sourcing in, in, in these same locations? What would IJM sort of suggest as an agenda for them? and yeah. how they should engage this problem. Yeah, so we've had a few other corporations come forward. In fact, uh, one of our biggest rehabilitation work in uh, um, South India has also been uh, led. I mean, uh, a lot of investment also comes from the um, uh, corporation. But my, um, what, would I, what would I call it, call for action really would be um, to say that we are in this together, and it is actually possible to address this problem if all of these pieces move together. Um, and coming from where I come from, India, I mean, what the, the, the trend that we see is that the traffickers work in absolute tandem. Their, their network is so powerful, they're so connected, they know what to do. If a perpetrator is here, then they find the most creative ways to get that person out of trouble. But if all the bad people can get together, and devise a scheme and a plan to uh, you know, rescue a perpetrator, why can't all the good guys come together? Why can't the corporations come together? And why can't the government come together and talk about this as a national priority or an international priority? So my call out to the corporations would be to you know, probably make this as a um, common goal. I mean, uh, definitely there would be questions about competition because for some it might be cheaper not to you know, uh, invest in a clean supply chain. But really, uh, look at the benefits of working together and see how best um, you know, um, um, the issue of slavery can be addressed. But it has to be in partnership. Yeah. And another way that we're working together along those same lines is in, in, until we can eradicate forced labor, in getting better at identifying it and finding oh, yes. it. And I have a team of investigators on the responsible sourcing team at Walmart that look into allegations of wrongdoing in the supply chain. Other organizations have the same sort of thing. And when we established combating forced labor as one of our priorities, we liked our investigators to be on the cutting edge of any you know, tools and intellectual you know, property available for understanding the priorities and being able to, to find them in investigations. So we scanned the horizon and really found it lacking. We, we didn't find any good training for investigators to help them identify indicators of forced labor in factory and site uh, settings. So we, uh, we contacted IJM as well as Stronger Together, another NGO in the UK who's great at training modules, and, and arranged uh, for a relationship, three-way now relationship, where they are developing a training module, a set of training modules, for investigators to be able to identify those indicators in investigative situations. And when that is complete, we are going to share it with public and private sector investigators so it can be used across industry. So one of the benefits of collaboration like this is that things get generated that can then be spread without ownership or compensation necessarily into, into other places where they can be useful. You can scale the solutions, yeah. Right. Uh, quickly, last question to you both. Um, anu, how do you prioritize, how does IJM prioritize where it works, and how would IJM prioritize where it would want corporate partnerships in particular? Um, so we prioritize our work in spaces which um, uh, has the most violence, um, and, and um, so the countries that we have chosen to work are countries which has got tremendous issues in um, either sex trafficking or labor trafficking or you know widows' rights or anything and everything to do with slavery and other um, aspects of violence. And um, as far as human trafficking in uh, supply chain is concerned, uh, we don't know of a single uh, sector which does not benefit 
from uh, forced labor or human trafficking. So it is important for us to have conversations like this with almost everyone in that space. And um, you know, it's great to see a giant player like Walmart um, you know, actually uh, be interested and invested uh, in taking leadership for this. Yeah. And, and Jan, given that Walmart is in basically <laughs> every sector and every industry selling products that are made all over the world, how does your company prioritize both its strategies but, but its, its, uh, its allocation of resources? Right. So in responsible sourcing, we've identified our priorities as combating forced labor, child labor, and addressing unsafe working conditions. And we have a fourth one that we'll be announcing in the spring. Uh, so we go through a process that's risk-based. Where are the biggest risks, and where do we feel we are in a position to make an impact? And then we often start with a, an epicenter of a category and a geography, like we did with Thai seafood, um, or we've done with like Malaysian electronics, and we, we try to solve the issue with part, like-minded partners and then scale it from there, either taking it to more geographies or to more supply chains within a geography. So we're, right now what we've done is we've, we've set out our standards for suppliers, which apply to everyone. We have our global statement of ethics. We re report in our global responsibility report. But we haven't made it easy for stakeholders who care about this to look and understand what our positions are on, on human rights. And so we are working now on a human rights statement that we'll be um, issuing in the near future that will actually make it easy for people to understand uh, what Walmart stands for and what we believe in in human rights. So that's coming soon. Coming soon. That's great. So a uh, concrete example of a company and a large NGO working together with measurable goals on the table in a collaboration. Um, this is less rare than it used to be. I've been doing this work for quite a while, and it used to be that institutions like the two represented here wouldn't even speak to one another. Uh, at this point, they're talking not only to one another, but also openly about the work that they're doing and about the challenges that they're facing. And we had another conversation this morning that involved the two of you and many others about the ways in which collaboration is essential, but also can't solve everything. Yeah. And what we still need is greater attention from more companies, um, more resources in the space, more attention from governments to enforce their own labor laws, much as, as was just described by the panel right before us. So with that as a summary, thank you very much for your attention, and please join me in thanking these two exceptional women. Thank you.